Whenever we take a look at Xbox One controllers, we usually just look at first party controllers straight from Microsoft. And the reason we do that is because they are really good at making first party controllers. And for my money, if you were to ask me what the best controller on the market is for any of the consoles right now, it's gotta be the Microsoft Elite controller. That controller there is by far one of the greatest things any of the companies have ever produced for controllers because it really does feel like a premium product, but it also has a premium price tag. But what if you wanted some of the features that were in that controller and a much more cheaper option. Well, that's where the folks at PowerA thought that they had an answer. So they sent in this. This is their enhanced wired controller. Does it live up to everything you'd probably imagine it needs to do to become one of the best controllers on the market? Well, let's find out. First up, let's talk about the design. Now, PowerA has created a bunch of different variations of this controller, but the one you're seeing here is called Solar Fade. It kind of looks like a sunset or a sunrise, and I kind of like the way that this one looked. But if you're looking for a different kind of color scheme, well, they do offer multiple variations. But no matter what variation you go with, every controller is going to be wired and not wireless, and it's also going to be completely constructed of plastic on the outside. Now, a lot of people out there might prefer something that has more of a metallic feel, and I'm one of those people, but this doesn't mean that this controller is poorly created. It actually feels very strong in the hands despite the fact that it is essentially just a whole plastic controller. The controller sports a pair of rubberized thumbsticks that feel very responsive no matter what game I played, and it also has a really good D-pad. This is the kind of D-pad that isn't very clicky, but it still has a good feel to it. And it does have a central pivot, which is something I always look for in these things. You'll also find the X, Y, B, and A buttons might seem to be a downgrade, but they're not. They feel just like original buttons that you find on a real Xbox One controller. The options and share button also feel the same as they do on a typical Xbox One controller, but what's different is the jewel in the center. No longer is it its self-lighting jewel, now it's actually just a plastic button, and beneath it, there's a little light that signifies that the controller's on or off. But on the top of the controller, there's a couple of issues that I want to point out because I really wasn't a big fan of them. For instance, the left and right shoulder buttons seem to work the closer you got to the edge of the controller, but when you try to move more to the center, the buttons actually don't click down. This is just the way that they're designed, and I'm not a big fan of that, but your mileage may vary, and you might be totally okay with that. And the other problem I had was the left and right triggers, although very responsive, seemed to be grinding against the body internally, and there seemed to be some kind of resistance. Not a lot to really affect my gameplay, but it was noticeable and it was a little bit awkward. Outside of that though, the controller pretty much feels just like an original Xbox One controller straight from Microsoft. You got a headphone jack port at the bottom, and you've got some pretty strong vibration motors in the controller that feel very close to the originals as well. All in all, what this controller is isn't that impressive by those functions alone, because it really is just a good Xbox One controller. It's what's on the back though that changes up the game quite a bit. Back there, you will find three buttons. Now, two of the buttons are advanced programmable buttons that you can change up on the fly by pushing the center button in the top right at the back here. Now, this button you hold down for three seconds. When you do, the front light flashes a bit. From this point, you can push any other button on the controller and then it will flash even more. Once that has happened, you push one of the buttons at the back and then that button now becomes that function. It's a very quick and painless way to assign any of those two back buttons to any button on the front of the controller or even on the top. But one of the things you should probably keep in mind is this doesn't allow you to make some kind of combination of buttons on one button itself because it only allows one input. And even though this is a USB style controller that needs to be plugged up to your Xbox One, PC, or any other system to work, one thing you should know is that even if you unplug it, it will remember your settings. This is a really cool feature because typically with these controllers, they forget what they're set up as as soon as they get unplugged. I'm one of those gamers that kind of prefers to use a controller that directly plugs up to the system that I'm using because I just prefer that constant on power where I don't have to worry about batteries. So that's why I like this and the addition of having a 10 foot USB cable included with it really helps because the system sometimes is pretty far away from me. Cheaper third party controllers are usually something I can't recommend to people because honestly, they don't really have the best build quality but this one is actually built pretty stable and I really do like a lot of those extra functions that it has. And yes, it does have its quirks here and there, but realistically, this is something I think a lot of gamers out there could really enjoy. And the fact that it will work on Windows and it will work on Xbox means that you can use it across multiple devices, which is something that many controllers don't offer nowadays. And when it comes to programmable back buttons, usually those controllers come at a pretty hefty cost, but not this one, and I'm pretty happy about that. 
A lot of people might write this controller off because they feel that it's too plasticky and stuff like that, and I totally understand. But when it comes to those two back buttons that you can program on the fly, that's something that I really enjoy. Even though I'm not a big fan of the triggers and all that other stuff, you can play every Xbox game that you want to play with this controller without any issues.